<laughs> I'm on my way up to uh, Dennis's uh, for fish and chips in Sheffield and we're going to Leicester to see a pal of ours for a night out I've only seen Dennis once since we fell out in February I saw him at Peter Fury's party last month so that's the only time I've seen him in the last two and a half months so if you don't hear from me again well I probably ended up in Dennis's crusher in his scrapyard <laughs> I'm only joking but uh, have a good weekend all you Porky's Corner uh, followers thank you for subscribing really appreciative but if you check on the YouTube thing listings or the, the information at the front I'm not registered to make any view any money off the views. I suppose I'm a bit fortunate in that uh, respect, but uh, not everybody is. You know, it's just a hobby. But we're going to get some good videos out there soon, and uh, things are going great. So peace out to all you people. And as I always say, the porky one-liner: keep on trucking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here with Dennis Hobson, yeah, uh, yeah, a place in Sheffield is took me to. Hey, CD. It's his pal's place. It's place. He's going to have a massage. Uh, we're not going to tell Sarah though. She's pulled you back at you, Dennis. Boxing it's like a bit of Bye bye, love. Bye bye. Oops. Yeah, we'll go and get some sunbathing done. Is it right? You used to uh, play semi professional football then? Is it's it an old football injury? I think it's a bit of wear and tear. We'll wear and tear. And how are you keeping in general? Nice, everybody's yeah. in a better mood when the sun comes out. It's lovely and yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> how, are you, how are you? How do you think boxing's going at the moment in, in the UK? He's thriving, isn't it? He's, thri he's thriving, and it's just uh, obviously Sky are doing a fantastic job as regards promotional. Yeah. But uh, there's a little bit of a monopoly, which which isn't great for some of the smaller time promoters. But you know we've we've all been quite uh, apt to like getting a piece of the pie. So mm -hmm. somebody doesn't get 100% of the to, to the of the monopoly. So yeah. we've got one or two things in the pipeline, and it's just a matter of just keep grafting away, and one or two things fall into place. And there. Yeah. Yeah. so uh, are you uh, are you looking forward to the show uh, next Friday? Liam Cameron against Nicky Jenman. Looking forward to seeing your Sheffield flares. Sheffield Ice Ring. You've got a new suit with flares, apparently. Yeah, I've, bought, I've had a new suit made from my new sponsor, and uh, I've been told by uh, a few people that the trousers look like flares. So, uh, I'm sure. I'm sure they'll they'll sort it out from before oh, next Friday. That'll be a sign for sure. Otherwise, there'll be a few hovercraft jokes from uh, the Sheffield mob, won't there? The old team Obson will be pulling my leg. Yeah. So yeah, it's a good show. Yeah. We've got uh, obviously Liam Cameron. Hopefully, Tommy um, Frank's on it. Tommy Frank. He's up and coming from Sheffield. So six and zero, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, Tommy will be involved with some title fights if he comes through this on. What it's not that? a given though, you know, yeah. against Craig Dabbs. Yeah, no, it's no, no, no. It it's a fifty. It's a good trade fight. It's as a Stephen trade Ball fight, says, isn't it? You know that sort of. Fight. Tommy's the favourite, but Craig Dabbs will come and have a go. So it's a good fight. Jim will come and have a go with, with Liam Cameron. Yeah. If Liam Cameron. Uh, goes into his shell, he'll struggle against uh, mm. Nicky. He'll just put the rounds on board, won't he, Nicky? Mm. So it's, it's a good scrap. Uh, mm. Sorry, a good show, two good scraps. And the undercards, DC, we've got a couple of mm. Steffi's kids on, and we've got uh, Mike Shinfield, a couple of Mike Shinfield's kids on. So, yeah. looking forward to it. Yeah, there's, uh, there's a few people coming on night in the night. Yeah, they're going to be. Maybe 1,200 days, so yeah. it'd be a nice house, and it's in, yeah. a, it's in a great arena. All the usual nice suspects will be there, won't they, Dennis? And then once we get the job done, we can just socialise a little bit after. Plus Chris Medley, he'll be there, won't he? Another celebrity, Chris Medley. Has he got a new suit, then? He needs one. He needs a suit, doesn't he, Chris? He needs a whistle, yeah. He needs a whistle. I heard uh, Terry Chapandama on his podcast, we're on about Chris's record. He's had 31 national finalists as amateurs. Which is more than anybody's had apart from GB uh, 
tra you know, Team GB trainers. And I bet he's up there with them as well. There's not much difference. Yeah, he's, he's, un he's under. He seems to have a good record, doesn't he, from kids being 10 and 12, doesn't he, going through? Yeah. He's on. He's, un, he's understated sometimes, Chris, and uh, he's, un, he's, he's underrated. He so. doesn't get the, yeah. the cool dust that other TV trainers get, not mention no names. But. Yeah, but you know, you know, Sid, Sid Liam comes through and yeah. he starts to get in the groove and yeah. everything yeah. falls into place and yeah. Yeah. mentally. Yeah. Uh, and he wins something. Yeah. That's we, better, yeah. We'll, uh, that's when Chris will make his name. Yeah. And then yeah. people will start talking about his amateur. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When, he, when Liam like. gets another belt, probably he'll yeah. start coming out. Or he get a few, a few defences. Yeah, which he'll, he'll deserve. So, mm. so I'm, 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 I'm hoping he does get that recognition. Yeah, because he needs it, doesn't he? He slipped under the radar, and he plus Liam slipped under the radar. Pushing for it, we're nice. No, they are. We're not. Are we attacking it like we do cutlery, and we go somewhere posh? <laughs> <pops. laughs> Why can't you keep still and just leave my Sorry, pushing mate. now? Right, we're mate. nice and comfortable for me. All right, boy. all right, mate. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so uh, we've covered Liam against him. I think Liam's, is he coping all right at middleweight then, or has he been struggling? What do you think? No, I think I'm lucky with him. He was 158, wasn't he last fight? He was mega, mega strong. Yeah. Uh, so, if he does his, and he's got a, a nutritionist yeah, and conditioner yeah, yeah. on board, so yeah. if he can keep doing that white weight comfortable, he's going to be a right handful for anybody yeah. at middleweight, because he's so big and strong and he's heavy handed. Yeah, he is heavy handed, yeah. He said to me overnight, he said, do you know what, Russ, I was stronger at 158 against Sheeda than I was at 168 against Zach Dunn in Australia, you know, yeah, he fought that big super middle. Did you look at his body compared when he weighed in? His body didn't look, he looked Sorry, soft. Sorry, when, when, when he got in the ring, mm. he looked soft, he weren't conditioned. You know what he reminded me of? You know that kid who was just fought Lewis Ritson, Scott Cardle? Yeah, yeah. He did the weight all right, but he didn't look strong, did no, he? He looked didn't. soft, didn't he? he did look soft. I think that's why he came out swinging, didn't he? Yeah, coming out of pop. Tried mm. to put it on him and then he got he got found out and got yeah. some, he was spent, weren't he? Yeah, yeah, just yeah. Just a time. Yeah. Yeah. It's a shame. They're saying he's, he's, done, he's done now, aren't they? I know, it's Scott. It's a shame for Scott, isn't it? I like him as a yeah. kid. I like his dad, yeah. nice people. Yeah, they're good people, yeah, Carl, aren't they? they? Mm. Yeah. So we've covered him. Tommy Frank, now he's another one that's gone under the radar, isn't he, Dennis? You know, the last couple of years. Maybe, but he's, you know, he's only six. Do you remember when I or... came up, left, left, left your house that night about five in the morning and I caught caught him running up near yeah. your farmhouse, up is near it, Clinton's? He's a, he's, he's a proper pride. Five yeah. in the morning, I didn't catch Liam Cameron or any of the rest of them out at that time. <laughs> I, I, I give him a pip, that's what you going, you? He had headphones on. Five at quarter past five in the morning, it was, I'll never forget. And, and ever since then, I've always kept my eye on him, haven't I, Dan? I see burglars at that time, don't we? Yeah, yeah, we only see people like oh, Smedley so. out at that time, but they're not training. <laughs> <laughs> only joking, Chris. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, he, uh, he impressed me, him, and obviously, he's got, a, he's got an old school trainer, hasn't he? Thin yeah. roads, so yeah. they seem to gel them too, don't they? They do. He's, he's got a chance, Tommy, and uh, if I can help him, he's got an experienced corner, hasn't he? Yeah, very much so. Mm. And he, he lives the life, so he's, he's, he's he got a chance. He lives the life, doesn't he? He's a nice little kid, isn't he? Yeah, smashing a life. He's yeah. got a steady girlfriend. He's got he don't, no outside influence. You don't hear about him coming out nightclubs, do you? Yeah. No, I like him. I think he's got a chance yeah. of winning something. He's new. got crossover appeal, then, hasn't he? Yeah, and he'll be getting more popular as he goes on. So if, yeah. he, if we can get him involved with some meaningful yeah. titles, I think his support will just grow and I think he'll be one of Sheffield's next big ones. It could be. Yeah. Who else have we got on the show then? Who else have we... Uh... Like I say, I've got a couple of Shinfields from out of Sheffield. He's Cash Alley's just joined the, the card. He's a big yeah. heavyweight Sheffield lad, Asian lad. Um, so he's just won the central area, beat uh, David. Good punch, yeah. David he's David bad Dave Allen, hasn't he? Yeah. Full time, yeah. So, he, so he's 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 on the bill now. So yeah. it is about an eight eight nine card bill. So it's it's going to be some, some good scraps. You know what we're trying to do. We've always been yeah, trying yeah, to put yeah. some competitive yeah. fights on. So yeah. are we yeah are we working with Ginger Tomcat on this one, Dan? Which one, Jim? Steffi. Well, is yes. He, is he on? Is yeah, he logged on? Steph, How many has he slipped on? He's yeah. Well, Jason Cunningham would have going to be on, and now he's got uh, Christian Kinsola. Yeah. Uh, he, he's on here. So um, he looks in great shape, actually. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, looking forward to seeing him now because I think he's, he's like served his apprenticeship. He was with yeah. me a, few, a couple of years ago. Yeah. But I don't think he knew what way he wanted to be. Yeah. Bye bye go. But I think he looks in fantastic shape. So yeah. hopefully he comes through. Where did he go for, after, after you, Dennis? Where did he go then? I think he went to Ryan's and, and now he's with Steffi. So mm. I, th I think he's got a chance, that kid. 
Yeah, people seem to leave people and Steffi gets them and polishes them up, doesn't he? He's on the shop floor every day, isn't he, Dan? On the shop floor, that's the way they be. You get your hands dirty, you get on the shop floor. Get... He's what we call in boxing a head the ball. <laughs> head the He's ball. always there, isn't he? It's way, way yeah. big. Where be if you want to achieve? So yeah. that, that's a good show then. This is the first show that we've been put, we were putting on at uh, Sheffield Ice Wing then, isn't it? After yes. a long association with the Ponds Ford. Yeah, but we'll probably go back to Ponds yeah. Ford. But I don't yeah. know. We'll see how this goes. Yeah. Great yeah. arena. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Bang across the road from yeah. EIS where obviously all the big names and Rob McCracken's there and yeah. Joshua's there. Yeah. Frost used to train there. Yeah, yeah. You know, all the, yeah. all the Olympians. So, you know, this. Yeah. We're in the right, uh, we're in the place where it's mecca for boxing. Yeah. So, you know, hopefully we're going to throw one or two world class fighters. There might be one or two world class fighters mm. come from this show on Friday, so who knows? It's just yeah. follow the journey, innit? Yeah, and how's the relationship going with free sports at the moment, Dennis? Is that looking promising for the yeah, future? Yeah, it's a work in progress. Yeah. So, you know, we're working at it, we've put two smashing shows on for them. We're looking to try and get towards doing a show a month. Um, and uh, looking forward to working with one or two other promoters and, and like I say it's a work in progress good lads, yeah. the Irish lads who's, who run free sports so hopefully you know they're going to grow with us uh, give us as much support as possible and as you know we can deliver fights from the low like uh, you know yeah. the kids starting off right up to world, world class and it's just if yeah. they, they want to grow with us yeah. we'll go all the way It's all boxing related stuff in it then mm. We've uh, there's, there's we don't seem to have a, that a lot of people around us like we used to have, did we? You know, three years ago, there's, there's a lot of there's a very, we're don't limited on numbers us. now, aren't we? We don't, don't need them. We haven't got many friends now, have we? Then we've only got a few, haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. not, not as many takers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's not as many woodpeckers on the scene now, is yeah, there? Not, not as many, not as many takers. But yeah. You live and learn, Russ, you live, you live and learn. learn yeah. But anyway, I need to get no going. problem, mate. All right, just just before we was... finish, uh, oh. I just want to mention about the pad, the passing to yesterday of Freddie King. Yeah, one of uh, one of Barry Earns clubs, his yeah. pals for the last yeah, 30, yeah. 40 condolences years. to Freddie and all yeah. his all his family and uh, you know he was involved with some great nights. He was yeah. character himself, old school trainer, old school then. trainer, and, uh, old school boxing I, character. I can see his face now. He always had a uh, one of the nicest track suits on. He was thinking, he wears some nice track suits on Freddie. <laughs> Uh, but shell suits, wear them yeah. shell suits, didn't he back in the day? Character. Yeah, and one of one or two big names. Yeah. And, you know, so you want to, you know, it's a shame you think, probably. Yeah. Like, end of, another end of an era, but condolences to, to his family and rest yeah. in peace, Freddie. And Eddie and Barry, because they were devastated. Yeah, absolutely. Them. Absolutely. Um, all right, then we'll continue this uh, later on, that way to where we're going tonight. All right. Thanks, Russ. No problems. Right, we're back in the car now, we're on our way for a night out to Leicester, me and uh, Ron Lyle, aka Dennis Hobson. How are you doing, uh, Ron? <laughs> I've hey. got for you again, Anna. Is that you again, Ron? It's, it's nice to know that you like to keep it at 60 miles an hour on a dual carriage run, isn't it? That's it, love, yeah. Hey. Absolutely. Never in a rush. No. No rushing is, is there? So, uh, what do you think about uh, James DeGale then, Dennis, uh, beating Truex on points? He gets him back in there, and he's in. Bowl, he's he's going to get in uh, in the mix for some um, for some big a big money fight, isn't he? You know, um, uh, what do you call him? George Groves. Yeah. It, it's a big money fight. Or Callum it? Smith. Or Callum Smith. So I mean, I think I think Groves is a better fight because he's more needle and he's a bit more history there. Um, Callum Smith, I don't think he generates as much. I think Groves is a bit more of an household name than Callum Smith. So I think that's a lot better fight for the for the punters and, and the build up. So I think it'd be a bit more of an event against George Grove. What do you think to uh, Ambrose Mendy's comments that James DeGale's shot to bits and he's getting hit too much and that his style, once your reflexes have gone, that's it, it's over. Has uh, is Ambrose not involved with him? Ambrose is not involved with well, uh, James DeGale no more. Strange that he's started making comments like that then, isn't it? Because not long ago Ambrose was saying he was best thing since Carl Zaggy. Uh, he's, a, he's a super salesman, Ambrose. Is he? He's a super salesman, yeah. Have you met Ambrose before then? Uh, just a bit, just yeah. a bit. Yeah, I've been touched. You've been touched? <laughs> Blessed. <laughs> I've been blessed. I've been blessed. You know, and you've been Ambrosed. 
ambrosia cream rice. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what do you think to the current situation, then, about Christopher Eubank Jr. and his dad, English? And his dad, English. So, um, no trainer at the moment, apparently. Well, no promoter, no TV deal. He's a, he's a commodity, obviously, and, and the kid can fight, but he only has, it seems like he only had a plan A and he ain't got the experience and they're all too busy with all the hype and all that and he's earned himself a lot of money just, yeah he can fight to a degree but he's earned a lot of money on hype now he needs to get a quality trainer if he's serious about doing something excuse me, having a legacy in boxing and, 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 and doing something special, he needs a proper trainer, have his dad there for the press conferences or holding court and creating a bit of theatre, but don't have him anywhere near his, his training programme. Yeah, yeah. Do you think his dad should just be there for press conferences and waiting and to do interviews, but just yeah, so let everybody else do the matchmaking and yeah, things like that? Sell the story, sell, promote him, promote, you help the, promote him. Do you think him. the dad's getting too involved with the, who, how much he should get paid and who he should fight? I think he's getting a bit too involved and obviously it's like uh, they didn't have a plan B, did they? George Groves had a plan B, didn't he? Yeah, of course he did. Uh, experience told and he got, he got old man, to be honest, didn't he? You got it right, didn't you, that night, then, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. And a good big un, you know, like I say, I'll always be a good little and he didn't have plan B, he couldn't get close to him, he didn't have the experience to open him up, so he's not a Sugar A Leonard who can step up, go through weights and but things what, like that. But what a lot of people are saying is on the night he got in the ring the same weight that Frotch did against Groves, but yet he looked a lot littler than Frotch, didn't he? Yeah, so something not right there, isn't it? Yeah. So yeah. he's not he's not a super middle. No, Frotch is a super middle, isn't he? Fro Groves Fro is a light heavy, isn't he, really? Yeah, but, but you know, a, a light heavy, a, sorry, a super middle is a, is a big lad, isn't it? A super yeah. middle. Oh, uh, Groves, he walks in that 14 stone plus, doesn't he? Sorry, he takes some beating. Yeah, he's going to take... And what do you think about Callum Smith? A lot of people have been critical about him recently, that he's not beat a former world champion, or even fought one yet. Obviously, he's undefeated, but he struggled with a kickboxer who had an handful of fights, didn't he? In his last fight. Do you think he's been just carefully marched? Yeah, do I do. think Groves will find him out on night? Um, but I don't know, because he's, 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 he's not been extended yet. And, and you can look ordinary against kids who don't come and open up and it's like fighting a journeyman if you've got some you know young kid fighting a journeyman they come they come to lose but they don't open up so yeah. they, they come not to get knocked out yeah. and it's more and usually then it's it's difficult to knock a kid out yeah. but if, if somebody coming out of go then you'll see the the quality of Callum Smith so but I'd still as we talk because of experience I'd, I'd, I'd pick George Groves and um, I, th I think it's a good fight but I'd, I'd, I'd rather see De Galen yeah, 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 yeah. We had, they had two good fights in amateur and pros, haven't they? So, they have another, there's a bit of needle there, isn't there? Yeah. Uh, what do you think about uh, James DeGale bringing on Paulie Malignaggi as a co trainer with Jimmy McDonald? A lot of people in boxing are saying that he's disrespectful, and a lot of people are saying it's added something to him. But what do you think? Depends how you interpret it, depends how you handle it. Uh, if, Jim, if Jimmy Mike says, yeah, let's, let's add something to try and get, because you're always looking for an edge in, in boxing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, what if he says, well, I, uh, I want to bring him on just to add to what we've already been doing? Uh, and, you know, I, 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 I can't say, I won't, I won't say anything against that. I, I, as long as they're all open about it and they're up for it, uh, why not bring somebody with experience to Malin, yeah. you? Yeah, yeah, because he's obviously, you know, he's a, he talks a good game on commentary, yeah, doesn't he? He's an intelligent fella, yeah. He's, yeah, he's, he's been there. He's been there, he's, he's done it, he's been in, you know, he's been world champion, been in with world champions, been yeah. in with some big punches, uh, very brave against Cotto, things like that, so he's, uh, he's got something about him, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, he has, he's, uh, I just worry for James DeGale, every time I see him he's marked up, you know, he, he, for the last couple of years, he just seems to... I don't think he's got many, many, many left in him, I think. No, he's, no. He needs to be careful, because I thought, you know, he's had a long... He's long got a long amateur career, yeah. And uh, and I think you know it took it took 
quite a few shots throughout his career so he's, he's not the most elusive even though he's very stylish and slick yeah. he has took quite a few shots and um, he don't he don't he wants to be in and out now I think he wants you know a couple of couple of big fights at the most and get out of the game yeah. he's, he's, he's achieved so much as an amateur and a professional he's had an, an amazing career hopefully he's financially secure and he looks after his money and he needs to get out he needs one stroke two big fights and get out yeah. what do you think about the situation with the middleweight division now Dennis to give Canelo a six month ban and uh, a no fine and, and he's already done his ban now but yet he's back later they gave Julius Caesar Chavez a million dollar fine and a nine month ban for smoking a joint and we get the other one, with PEDs and a six month ban, and that's from the WBC. You think there's a bit of double standards going on there then? It sounds like it, doesn't it? Yeah, because Canelo's a big star, isn't he? Big star, he's, he's a flagship for Mexico, isn't he? So, yeah. And the WBC and all that, so mm. I, I don't agree with it. You know, I mean, if somebody's a cheat, they need to face a, a proper. Uh, a proper ban and, and, and a proper punishment. So you've been fortunate in your in your management career and promoting career. You've never had a drug cheat, have you? Nobody's failed one test, have they? Well, not not there. No, <laughs> well, no, nobody's failed. Oh, but, nobody's. Yeah, yeah, I know. But mean. as regards a drug cheat, nothing I've known about. Mm. So, um, no, I mean, I've dealt. I've had. I've had a lot. A lot of other stuff to contend with, and in boxing, you know. Yeah. The, Kicks in the Niagara's and stuff like that. Yeah, I wanted yeah, to yeah, when yeah, I've created yeah. a few monsters, but yeah. you can't knock what where I've took kids who weren't Olympians and yeah. and household names. We've gone on with unfashionable kids and won world titles or getting world title shots. So yeah. um, hopefully, it's not the last time I do it. Yeah. What do you think to uh, Jamie McDonnell is going to fight in Japan for big money? Do you think he'll win? I don't think you can count, discount Jamie because he's gone away so many times since he left me. I think yeah. he thought he was going to be the top of the bill on Sky or whatever, fine at home. Well, he's not a massive ticket seller, but you've got to admire his, his boxing ability and his prowess and his bottle. He goes away and he does the business now. Mm, I think fight so, kind of done. Yeah, it's a tall order what he's got, but uh, I think no matter what happens, he's going to step up in weight. He'll find a way, Jamie, won't he? Um, he's not so, been beat, has he? No. In, in ten year and two months. Is that what it is? Ten year, ten year, two months since his last defeat. He came to you at eight, two, and one, didn't he? Mm. And you went thirteen and zero in British Commonwealth, European, and World. Not a bad record, now, is it? Not bad, is it that? Yeah, I got him, mate. Now we're making of him, but please leave he, the world um, about at the first exit towards. Some of them have got short memories, but I, as a as a boxer, I do I, I do you admire him. You stay up to watch his fights, don't you, Dan? I, I admire him, yeah. I admire him as a fighter. If that were me, I couldn't stay up and watch some of his fights if I'd done all that with him. Well, um, I'm a boxing fan, fan, aren't I? I'm a purist, but like, uh, I'm big on principle, and I and I, I hate what he did. Yeah. But he's, um, but as a fighter, I, re, I, re, I respect him. So I just split one in it's two parts. Yeah. I don't respect him as a man because he's he's dishonourable. Yeah. And people say, oh, they might say, oh, oh, he's great, Jamie, he's loyal. I used to think he was great, but he's disloyal. Yeah, he's been all over the world, but you took him to Olympics, didn't you, Dennis? Even though you were a professional, you took him to Olympics. I took him all over, all over, all over place, sent him, show him, him how to, to train and WBC conventions and, and stuff like that. So, you know, it were a, it were a work in progress, but and we got there, and that's what, and it was so sweet. And then he goes and does that, but. I just hang on to what I've achieved with that kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I got him there. I got him. We we're going to have to fight in Mexico City, or we we're going to have to fight Leo Santa Cruz before he were ready. I, I did deal side deals to so we could get away from fight, avoid Santa Cruz at that time, or oh, and having to go to LA to fight Santa Cruz or Mexico. So you know, they were all little bit of manoeuvring to get him there and the timing, and uh, so I'm proud of what I achieved for him. And, and that's that's all I hang on to. Yeah. Well, let's hope he wins anyway. They all, both get home safe. I hope to he the wins. Families. I hope he wins, and I hope he's safe. He's he's a he's a great boxer, and uh, and he's got plenty of ball inside that ring. Yeah, he has. Yeah. Right. I want to I want to speak now about the current situation with the heavyweight division, Dennis. Oh yeah. 
Uh, what do you think is going to happen with the Wilder Joshua situation? Uh, I think that'll get strung out. There's certain parties and there's two ways of saying I don't want to fight. Either ask for too much money or 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 offer not enough money. So, and I think that some of that's going off here. Uh, I, I don't think one party's being fair to the other way. I may mention names. I think if they were. Well, there's only two names you can mention: Luda Bella and Eddie Hearn. Well, for me, it's a fight everybody wants to see. They're both going to get rich, aren't they? And uh, I think Eddie's probably wanting a bit too much. Or Joshua is. I think if they played the ball, play ball more. Uh, I think uh, it, it, it had happened. It's a massive fight. I don't think it's going to happen yet. No. No, money. I don't think they can come to terms. Joshua said at his press conference last time it isn't about the money with him, it's about the belts, but now it seems to be about the money, doesn't it? It's not about the money, money, money. Yeah, I don't need your money, money. Well, I think that's a lot of crap to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Of course it's about money. Uh, if he, you know what I mean, he wants to create a legacy and build a legacy and he, and he ticks all boxes, Joshua is, he's a role model, he's clean cut, so talks right and he's the world champion, he comes from England, so that's fantastic. Um, so, but he's going to say, look, I sell 80,000 tickets. <laughs> Yo, come, you, want a, you want a piece of it, you can only have a little piece of the pie. Now, maybe he gets the lesser piece of the pie, but I think gotta, to make it happen, they've got to come a bit closer together. And uh, if, if Joshua was that serious about cleaning up, then he'd, he'd come a bit closer together. It, look, if, you, if, if money didn't bother him that much, he'd still earn a lot of money if he went 50-50. But he's not going to go 50-50, but even if he went 60-40, I think the... Deontay Wilder fight happens yeah. at 60 40. So, well, then if Wilder wins, they can have a fight at 60 40 all the way, then can't they? Yeah, if it's a good fight, get it back on. People yeah. will want to see it, people will pay to see it. So, yeah. why not? So, they can double up. Yeah. Life changing money, no matter what 60 40, yeah. 70 30, 50 50. Whoever's on the high side or low side, it's life changing money. It's going to make them financially secure for the rest of their lives. If, if the hand live on. Yeah, it's uh, there's mega money involved, and Wilder's not getting nowhere near Joshua's money, is he? No. So why don't they offer him a decent purse and get it on? I don't think uh, I don't think they want it enough. What do you think about the situation with Billy Joe Saunders? He's won the belt, then not fought for ages, nearly got beat in Scotland, yeah. and then he's fought, what did he fight after that? Willie Monroe, and then David Lemieux. But for the, all these last past two years, he's been calling out, well it's two and a half a year, isn't it, since he won the belt. He's been calling out G -G -G. Golovkin and GG, uh, sorry, Triple G, and now he's in the in the mix to fight him because Canelo's getting a drug ban, and then Billy gets injured within 48 hours. Do you think they don't want it, or do you think they, do you agree with Billy saying he needs a longer camp, longer than eight week? Uh, I, I haven't read a lot about it to be honest, Russ. Or do you uh, think Frank, Frank just wants to do what he normally does with the WBO and milk it and not have the fight because he's got form for that, hasn't he? Well, I think Billy might be. Billy might be a victim of that. Um, I mean, I rate Billy. I've, yeah, you, I, you tried to sign him at Olympics, didn't you? No, just, wait. Just after Olympics, yeah. So. Tag watch. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I rate him. I think he's great. But he's he's not gonna. He's not having enough defining fights, and and for him to be a great. He's got Martin Murray next. He just seems to be going from guys ranked outside the yeah, top it's 25. Stagnating a little yeah, bit. Yeah, he's, he's, he's not Martin gone Murray, forward, has he? He'll always be a good fight, though. I like, I love Martin uh, Murray. Yeah, I know he's, you're he's, a Martin Murray fan, aren't you? But he's, he's, a, he's his fifth world title chance, and you know, he's, not, he's past his best, isn't he, Martin Murray? Yeah, probably. It's a fight I'd like to see Liam Cameron in, Martin yeah, Murray, yeah, uh, yeah, you know, before he, made, that, before he made uh, Billy, Billy Joe. So. Yeah. You know, if, if Liam comes on again against this, against uh, Nicky Gemman and does does a the business there, and then looks as though he's improved, yeah. then we move on again. There's sort of fights I want to I want to test him in against yeah. such as Martin, and then we'll see where where he is. 
no matter what result is. Uh, and then you can start beating the drum trying to get towards Billy Joe and things like that. Yeah. But uh, Billy Joe should be frying bigger fish now. Uh, and getting yeah. involved with unifications and, yeah, and he's he capable. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's more than capable, but a lot of people are giving Dominic Ingall props for winning the Lemieux fight. They're saying he's a technical trainer and he's up for Ring Magazine Trainer of the Year and all that. But uh, and then there's the other side, a lot of people that are saying that Billy were already a world champion and that Lemieux had not beat nobody and he, and he, he were tailor made. For uh, Billy, what, what do you think about that, Dennis? I think if somebody took up, I think he would tailor made for Billy. It's Billy Joe who's a technical fighter. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. He already had it, didn't he? And Gunnar, the Ingles, they've got, you know, yeah, they've got the history and things like that. So it might be that he's, he just, because of their history, respects them more. But ability wise, he's, he's fighters what makes trainers. You know, yeah. gets reputations for trainers and. Uh, Billy Joe's quality, you know, sometimes you just need to be in a in a good environment, which I think he, he, he probably will suit him down at the the Ingles. Uh, they're not going to change him much uh, as long as he keeps somebody happy like Billy Joe, and and he gets up in the morning, and does his runs and his routines and program. Then that's 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 all you need for somebody with the quality of Billy Joe Saunders. So. He'll he'll be fine. He just, it's up to Warren now to get him in some defining fights, and that's what I'd be looking to do for him. Do you think if we don't get a defining fight after Martin Murray, do you think Warren's just milking it? I think so, because he's getting on for three years now since he won the belt, isn't it? It's not a stranger to doing that, is it? No, oh, no. Well, Joe Calzaghe had 22 world title fights at super middle, but only eight were former world champions or current, and only two were undefeated, weren't they? Kessler and Jeff Lacey. So, who were the other 14 guys that we beat out of them 22? You tell me, Russ, you're an aficionado. Well, I know, I'm just saying there were nobodies, weren't they? Tucker Pudwell and Branko Sobot, a sheep, a goat herder from, uh, you know, Eastern European, you know what I mean? 14 and 1 for a, fa for a first defence in Cardiff, yeah. whereas Frotch fought Jermaine Taylor in USA at Foxwoods on a Lula Bella show. Yeah. There's a difference in quality, isn't there? Yeah. Why waste a training camp fighting a journeyman when you can fight the real McCoy? Well, that's why I mean, that's why I admire what Mick did with with Froch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mick uh, Hennessy, yeah. yeah. Uh, he put him in hard fights from day one, didn't he? From winning belt. I think he tested him out at the right time. I think he did a fantastic job with Froch. Yeah. Uh, and I know Froch had got the the, the uh, quality and the pedigree, but Mick did a great job. And he's a boxing man, Mick. And Mick Hennessy. Yeah, yeah. And. and um, Froch, I, I, look, I, I love Froch. I, I don't, as, I don't know him as a person. Uh, I've only met him, I think, once or twice. Um, but as a fighter, I just fucking respect him. He's just a man's man. It reminds me of Clint Woods in a lot of ways. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. I just, I just respect the kid because they were in good fights. Mm. He's not, he's not my favourite all-time fighters because technically, uh, you I, like Ray Leonard, don't you? Yeah, he's my favourite all-time, but. I just love what Froch were all about. I love Do you remember when, Jamie, when you were stuck in that lift with Jamie McDonnell and Ray Leonard were there and you said, look who that is there, Jamie. Ray Leonard. <laughs> what did Jamie say? <laughs> what was that like? What was that like then? <laughs> I mean, it's, one of, it's probably the old time. Top five all time fighter, isn't it? Yeah, he went. Probably top. Oh, I know, and what a fighter he was. What? Were he any good? I went, get any good? That's the sort of. Jamie doesn't know fighters, does he? Though he's not. Yeah, that was mentality. But in a way, it works for him because, like, he probably don't get really nervous before fights and things like that. I suppose sometimes, like Clinton, used to get really into a into a um, I don't know mood and things like that because he were a bit more clued up and he knew what he was facing. Whereas Jamie, he probably because there's not a lot upstairs. I don't know. But um, he's, 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 uh, he's a character, Jamie, and uh, I, I loved it. I loved my time with him, the good times we had, and he did. I know he did. We had some great times, but and it was fun. And uh, look, look what we achieved. But yeah, you get fighters like Froch, just the men's men, aren't they? And yeah, I, I just yeah. admire him. I just admire him as a fighter. Yeah, he's probably got the best record since. Uh Lennox Lewis, honey, for fighting the death row killers back to back, honey. Yeah, you know, a British fighter. Yeah, he's got a great. I mean, Nazim Hamid beat nine world champions, didn't he? I know Frotch beat ten, Calzaghe beat ten, Lennox beat fourteen. 
you look at their records, but NASA's record, you could pick holes in it like Swiss cheese, couldn't you? Apart from the Kevin Kelly fight, and he'd had 50 fights, Kevin Kelly, yeah. and Naz went life and death with him, didn't it? Great fight, I said. Great fight, it's, one, it's in top 10 for all time classic, isn't it, in Ring Magazine? Great fight. Yeah. Frank Warren's first show in the What world. about Ron Lyle and George Foreman? Oh, well, we have to mention that because it's your dad's favourite, isn't it? Ron Lyle, Ron Lyle, your hero against Big J, they knocked lumps out of each other, didn't they, in that yeah. fight, didn't they? Yeah. I've watched that fight a few times, your dad told me to watch that. He yeah. said, a great fight, great fight, Porky. Ron Lyle against George Foreman. That man might be like me and you if we ever yeah, get sparring, him, Russ. Yeah, we might have to have a, have to have a fight and then we'll put uh, gloves on, 12 ounces then. Eight. Eight, so, so you don't want me to put eights on against you then, I'll knock lumps out of you. What you can't see, you can it. Yeah. yeah, that's what he's saying. Yeah. Where do you see you if you were going at the moment then, Dennis? Because he, uh, you were very unlucky against Parker. What do you think to that, Dennis? I've got me uh, some of me some of me thoughts. I'll, I'll not I'll not say. I, I think it were. Uh, <clears throat> you know what? He wouldn't have five for me. I, I looked at a photograph the other day. Parker and his people on one side, you were on the other, you were leaning all towards somebody, Parker's chin were on the floor, all his people were, his, his, his shoulders were were unched, he thought he got beat. So, it weren't a great fight, but yeah. for me, you we won it. I think it's in Ring Magazine, isn't it? That, uh, yeah, they thought yeah, it won yeah, by yeah, four Ring, five. Magazine, Ring Magazine, some editors and nah, people from there. It weren't a great Magazine fight, him, yeah. but I, the, what he'll have learned from that, and, 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 and the disappointment of having a t decision, what you thought you'd won, given yeah. against you, he'll, he'll learn a lot from that. You know when he wins a world title? It'll, it'll be, be more sweeter. It'll be all, all, the more, all the more sweeter, yeah. And I think he'll be better, better fighting for it anyway. And uh, there's nobody moves like you in the heavyweight division. No. And his pedigree then, I know I keep using the word pedigree, but... He's got a amateur, eh? Fantastic pedigree. Real amateur. And he's got... One thing about the Furies, they've got a, wi a winner's attitude, and that's what I'm into. I love that, the winner's attitude. Find a way to win, and that's what his dad's got. His dad's uh, quite big on morals, isn't he, Peter Fury, isn't he? Yeah, and, and uh, that's why we, we hit it off, and yeah. you know. You and I, him get on, don't you? Yeah, he's, he's, he'd, he'd have been in, all right in old scrap metal trade. Oh, you, you, Peter. Yeah, you shake his hand, and you know you've bought it, win or lose, or you. Or he's not going to put some... house bricks in, in, in load. <laughs> well, he might do that. <laughs> Not like you. Like I have done uh, uh, But, you know what, you know if he shakes your hand and looks, he's going to look you in the eyes and you've got to deal with him and that's, and there's, there's very few people about like that. Yeah. And that, and that's what I'm into and that's why me and him hit it off. Yeah. Yeah. I've been, uh, I've spent a bit of time there last month at Peter's gym and with Peter and Yui is a very hard trainer, very hard trainer. He just gets on with it, he doesn't complain. Uh, he's a role he, model, isn't he? Oh, he's a proper role model. He says all right things, doesn't he, Yui? He doesn't swear, he doesn't insult people. Somebody come over while we were having a meal at this restaurant and uh, they came over talking about business cards and look, he's eating. Him and his uh, sister and me were sat there and he had a business card and Yui listened to what he had to say and took the card and that. And mm. he's, got a bit, he's got a touch of class about it, you know, like Josh Whale. He's got that bit of class. You know yeah. what I mean? He has got Life some class about Yeah, he has yeah. got some class about him. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And, and, Josh has, hasn't he, and his dad, like, they've got a bit of class, haven't they? Yeah. And you has got a bit of class about I like that. He's got a lot of class. A lot of people give it the bad boy, don't they, in boxing? Yeah, he's like, honestly, he's like a breath of fresh air, and look at, his, look at what he's achieved. And, yeah. you know, if he wins a world title, where yeah. me and you think he can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll he'll be a world champion for a long time. Him. Yeah. Oh, you, oh, you, you better believe it. Yeah, I think he will. If he's matched correctly at the right time. He's that. He's, he's fought everybody though, hasn't he? In his 15 fight, you. I know people keep saying, oh, you always bring that up. Well, in his 15 fight, he must have been 